The narrator explains the causes and consequences of the 1830 July Revolution in France. After Napoleon's defeat at Waterloo in 1815, the monarchy tries to reassert the rights that it enjoyed before the French Revolution of 1789. Since the post-1815 government has been hampered by unsuccessful military campaigns and social injustice, the monarchy mistakenly believes that it can slowly rescind the rights it granted in 1815. When it attempts to do so, the government collapses, resulting in the July Revolution of 1830. The new government, however, faces as many problems as the old one. The new king, Louis Philippe, tries to find a middle ground among the different political factions but succeeds only in alienating all sides. His miscalculations lead to another revolution in 1832. Led by Enjolras, student revolutionaries begin to organize a massive political insurrection in the Faubourg Saint-Antoine, a district of Paris. Marius continues to obsess over Cosette. He still does not know her real name and refers to her as the Lark. He finds a park called the Field of the Lark and goes there every day to soothe the pain of his loss. Little does he know that Erpanini, out of her love for Marius, has tracked down Cosette. Erpanini tells Marius that Cosette and Valiant are living in Saint Germain, a Paris suburb. Erpanini does not tell Marius that she saw Cosette in the garden of the house while observing the house on behalf of an imprisoned robber. Erpanini tells Marius to follow her to the house. He fails to realize that Eponini is in love with him and tries to hand her a five-franc coin. She sadly lets the coin fall to the ground and tells Marius that she does not want his money. Tucked away in their house on Rue Plumet and Saint Germain, Cosette and Valian once again live a happy life free of fear. Nevertheless, problems begin to develop not from outside this time, but from within. Cosette, who has lived with Valian since she was eight years old, is blossoming into a young woman. She begins to sense that Valian has chosen the seclusion of Saint Germain for reasons other than merely hiding from Yvert. Ever since Valian ended their regular visits to the Luxembourg Gardens, it has become clear that he wants to hide Cosette from other men. Cosette thinks wistfully of the young man in the gardens. Having never had romance in his life, Valian has no personal experience with love to help him relate to Cosette's yearnings for a man she has never met. At the same time, Valian is painfully aware that Cosette is all that he has in life. Losing Cosette would mean losing everything. The street urchin Gavrock overhears Father Mabouf worrying about his finances. Gavrock slips away and sees the murderous Montparnasse pounce on an old man. With great agility and strength, the old man, whom we recognize as Valian, defends himself. He pins Montparnasse to the ground and lectures him about his life of crime. He then gives Montparnasse his wallet and lets Montparnasse go. Gavrock deftly picks Montparnasse's pocket and throws the wallet full of money over Mabouf's wall. Mabouf is ecstatic to find the wallet next to him, and his housekeeper declares that the money must have come from heaven. After a few months of discord, Cosette and Valian begin to live in harmony again. Their relationship reverts to the bliss they enjoyed during Cosette's childhood. Marius, however, interrupts this harmony. He has been spying on Cosette ever since Eponini gave him the address of the house in Saint Germain. One night, he leaves a declaration of his love for Cosette. The next evening, after Valian has left for his nightly walk around town, Marius enters the garden and professes his love for Cosette. She reciprocates Marius's feelings.